This time, we ditch the plane and take a ferry trip to the Dutch capital, Amsterdam. But it isn't all plain sailing. Today, I'm meeting Chris at Liverpool Street and we're off to Harwich. But a major power outage has shut down rail services right across southern England. Miraculously, trains to Harwich are still running, but I was lucky to even make it into London. But that's not the end of our problems, as there's a major storm brewing and gale warnings issued right across the North Sea where we're heading. We're in Harwich International Ferry Terminal, waiting to get the boat over to Holland for the weekend. But the wind's really starting to pick up. So it's a seasick pill and straight to bed. Well, it's six o'clock in the morning and we're nearly in Holland. And bang on time, we arrive in the Hook of Holland. So it's 10.30 on Saturday and we've arrived in Amsterdam. We had to get a bus as well as a train, but in fact that was okay and we slept much better on the boat than we thought we would. And the only thing is, it's still raining a little bit today. We can't check into the hotel until two, but it's cleared up a bit. So we're having a wander around the canals of Amsterdam. And we start to take in the sights of this beautiful city, as we're lucky to have made it here at all. I think we've sussed out where the rain is coming from. I saw this shop and thought of my friend Nick. Nick and his partner have a tiny cow that travels the world with them. It probably came from here. Cows aren't your thing? How about a duck? And now the sun's come out. Later, we head across the water to Amsterdam North and one of the highest points in the city. Welcome to Amsterdam. Great views from here, but we are not alone. Vloggers. <laughs> not as easy as it looks. Bear wants to know what's making all the noise. It must be lunchtime. And we get some patatas bravas to see us through the long trip down. Going down. Back at ground level and we wander along to a ferry terminal that will take us back into town. The great thing is, these ferries are free. Of 
course, bicycles are everywhere in Amsterdam, but we are just walking, looking around, exploring, and other monkey business. It's a great way to find some really cool spots in Amsterdam. And catch up with some canal watching. There are over a hundred kilometers of canals in Amsterdam and 1500 bridges. As you wander around the city centre, you're never far away from a canal. And Stroop waffle shops. I bought Stroop waffles and ice cream. And finally, it's time for cheese. found the Cheese Museum in Amsterdam and trying various cheeses. Here's a green cheese. That's pesto. And we'll have to try the uh, hot chili cheese. Mm. Oh yeah, that's nice. Wow, but that really does taste like beer. That's strange. Behind me is the Homo Monument, a monument commemorating all the victims of homophobia throughout the world. The three individual triangles of the Homo Monument form one larger triangle. And a block or so away is the famous Anne Frank House. We decided to take a canal boat trip from right outside her front door. This canal was dug in the 17th century. So it's three main canals, Prinsen Canal, Empress Canal, and Gentleman's Canal, the first one. Here, this is Prinsen Gracht. The canal is Gracht in Dutch. You see the hooks, in order to get the goods inside, they uh, use the pulley system, so they attach the wheel to the hook with a rope to the street level, and then everything was lifted up and brought in like that. It's an hour-long trip around the canals and the Amstel River, and there's no better way to see the main sites of Amsterdam and hear some of the history and stories of the city, the buildings and the bridges. This one's called Skinny Bridge. It's a very uh, a narrow bridge, only for bicycles and pedestrians, no cars allowed. It also believed to be the love bridge of Amsterdam. So not the discotheques, and people say these houses, they dance to the music of the bars. They actually lock these houses together in order to prevent them from falling down. Here in the city centre are very expensive. Six, seven hundred thousand euros, the whole buildings go for millions. When the sun is out, it's a really pleasant way to spend the afternoon. This is Amsterdam with its very steep stairs. I wonder if there's a mouse. Not 
far from where we're staying, out west, is Vondel Park, the largest and most popular urban park in Amsterdam. At 47 hectares, it sees almost 10 million visitors a year. There's a statue of the Dutch poet Vondel, who the park is named after. The park even contains a genuine Picasso statue of a concrete fish. There are a number of lakes and fountains. With plenty of places to just sit and relax. Or enjoy some food and drink. We're in a cafe called Vondel Turin in Vondel Park. I wondered what the Turin meant. thought it might mean flamingo, but it actually means garden. Mozzarella with beetroot pesto. Yum. And not far away. This is Rembrandt Park. And according to Google, it's a public park featuring lakes, pathways and playgrounds in tranquil, tree-filled surrounds. I think it's a dog walking park. But it has some strange bird life too. Back near Vondel Park is the museum district. Chris gets himself trapped in a fountain. Phew, lucky escape. With over 70 museums in Amsterdam, just about everything is covered. From art, history, culture, cannabis, torture, and even broken pots. Next, we wander into town and have a look around Dam Square. What a load of old ball. Amsterdam is a very compact city, so it's easy to walk around. Then we head into De Wallen, better known as the Red Light District. If it's food you want, I have an idea. We've just had breakfast, and now we're off to find a food hall. De Hallen is a food hall in Oud West, which is well worth a visit. Oh, I remember these. Inside are food stalls for just about every type of food you can think of, and beer. Guess what I find? Netherlands cider. That's a nice blonde beer. I go for Padron, a wonderful Dutch food stall with some great vegetarian dishes and just a hint of Spain. The mushroom halloumi burger is delicious. There you go, sir. Thank you. Meanwhile, Chris orders a wrap. And I had to order some Padron peppers. I'm going for the big one. No hot ones today. And 
I must say this cider is going down a little too well. Time for dessert. And of course, more cider. Too many bear ciders. And when we get back to our apartment, I'm delighted to find more cider just across the street. We found our local microbrewery that even does a really nice cider. And it's just outside our front door. It's a shame we've only just found it. This morning we're out on a windmill hunt. It's no particular windmill, it just happens to be the closest one that showed up on Google. Now we just have to find it. There it is, windmill. So that's all things Dutch ticked off our checklist, apart from a tulip. We found a tulip, and that's it from Amsterdam. And if you've enjoyed this trip, don't forget to subscribe and catch up with us again on our next adventure. <laughs>